We're going to show you how to use the Kaiba Bender hardware system along with all the basic hardware and the cut files that you're going to need to be successful. Let's dive into it. All right. So what is Kyle Bender? Kyle Bender is a dovetail connector. Uh, it comes with a special bit and hardware that allows you to make really a whole bunch of things. Yeah, we got flat pack furniture. You can take things and mount them on a wall. Um, basically anything that you might want to reassemble and disassemble also multiple times. This yeah. stuff is really good for assembling and disassembling over and over again. Yeah. Um, and we have this little sample part here that where we can show, you know, a couple of the different possible connections with this. Go ahead and snap that apart. Yeah. And you can just hear how kind of tactile that connection is when we get these two snapped together. That's the short connector. And then this long connector um, has this longer joint. Ah, uh, it is a little bit stronger than the short connectors. And it's also much more directional as well. You can see because it has that, you know, long connection that's not going to rotate with just one part like a single connector might be able to pivot around. Cool. Uh, we also have some examples of some things that we've built with Calverbinder. So here is a small stool slash side table that we put together. And I'm going to show you how easily at least the top of this can come apart. And we're going to make a couple of similar 90 degree joints with this today. Here, do you want to show off those mortises? There we go. Beautiful. And if we go back to the forward cam, you can see we've got three single Calver Bender connectors on each side of this bench. Excellent. Um, we can pop this back together. I've also got another little sample piece over here, kind of a more complex wall mounted style thing there we go and this just i mean it just slides together as well very satisfying pretty smooth you can also do a little bit more complex uh, maybe cabinetry style wall hanging stuff like this absolutely a lot of fun yeah um we have a kit here of all of the hardware that you will need to work with calver bender with origin um so I think a good place to start would be just to go through the whole kit. All right. First and foremost, we have the bit itself that shares the same profile as the hardware. Next, we have the single connectors. Yeah, let's show off that single connector on the Origin cam one more time. Yeah. There you go. Better view of that dovetail profile. We have the long connectors. We have the drill guide. Yep. Um, and important note about this drill guide, it has two sides. Uh, the two sides of that are a series of five holes and a series of five holes with some uh, wider holes. You might wonder what those are for. Uh, the wider holes are for a different version of the long Calver Bender connector. Uh, we really recommend that you use just the narrow side with these. And important note, this drill guide is meant for 19 millimeter material centered. And so the spacing from the edge to the holes on that is going to be nine and a half millimeters. That's going to be an important number later. Yep. We have the two millimeter pilot, pilot hole or pilot bit. Yep. If you're in the U.S. and you need to replace that, the closest common fraction is five sixty fourths. But you can get two millimeter in any hardware store these days as well. Yeah. Okay, we have a T10 Torx driver. And we have three sizes of screw. We have M3 in 12, 20, and 30 millimeter lengths. Now, the interesting thing about the Calver Bender connector is that most of the strength from the connector comes from the screw. The longer the screw you use, the stronger your connection is going to be. A shorter screw might pull out easier. Uh, the minimum screw length that we recommend is 12, meter, 12 millimeters, and that 30 millimeter is uh, definitely good for when you need a stronger hold. Yeah. All right. I mean, that's everything that comes in the kit. I feel like it's time to just show everybody how we use it. Let's do it. We okay. are going to be using primarily plate today, plate and a drill. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to be making two 90-degree connections one with the single Calver Bender connector 
and one with the long connector. Okay, All so right. let's roll over to Shaper Hub and we're gonna show you how we sync our uh, pre-made digital templates for the Kyle Verbinder system to Origin. Let's do it. Okay, here we are on the laptop. This is Shaper Hub, hub.shapertools.com. And if you go at the top of the screen here, you'll see this button for the hardware catalog. And I'm gonna go ahead and press that. That'll take me there. Now this is Shaper's hardware catalog. This is a library of almost 200 now um, templates for digital or digital templates for hardware products. And uh, you can use these to install a wide variety of hardware with Origin, anything from concealed hinges to flat pack fasteners. We are gonna go in here to the filter and just search for Calverbinder, which is right here. If we click on this, this shows the two Calverbinder products. We have the short connector and the long connector. By clicking into this page, I'll see some info about the Calverbinder short connector. I can scroll down here to see some things that are recommended for the cut. For example, you must cut this with the Calverbinder router bit. You must cut that to a depth of 7.2 millimeters. And here's a preview of that cut file. You'll see we have the clearance area here, which is where you start and end the cut. This is where the connector is inserted. And then this custom anchor point um, represents where the connector actually is going to end up when it's fully seated in this Calverbinder mortise. So we can place this custom anchor point at the same place that we place the pilot screw in the corresponding, or the, the screw, the pilot hole for the screw in the cor corresponding piece of material. To sync this, I'm going to go up here and click Sync to My Files. That's going to automatically transfer that file to Origin. If I go back to the long connector, I will sync that to my files as well. And now, Jake, you are ready to go with two Calverbinder connector profiles. Excellent. Let's talk about how we're going to use plate to actually place these things on our material. We're going to use both the front fence and the side flags of plate and position that so that I am contacting all three points. Now those side flags are going to give us a measurement of 70 millimeters to our center point here. And that's where we're going to place, or we're going to remember that number because that's where we're going to actually screw in the hardware on our opposing piece. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to place this template, is right in the center, which is going to be 70 millimeters offset from the edge. Exactly. So if I bring origin in, I can go ahead into import. Yeah, let's do the short one first. Grab the single. Yep, and now here's something that's important. We're gonna place this centered uh, in the X direction, which is going to give us a 70 millimeter spacing in from the edge. Now from the distance of the front fence, we want a gap of 9.5 millimeters because that's the distance of our pilot hole uh, locations from that edge drilling template that we have in the kit. Easy peasy. So we want to make sure those two things match up. So we're going to do in the Y direction. We have 50 all the way down. Plus 9.5. That's going to give us 9.5 from our edge. Yep, remember that front fence is 50 millimeters from the center. That's why we're subtracting 50 and then adding 9.5 back to that. Perfect. All right, we're placed. Okay, so I think we're going to cut one on this side. We're going to cut another one in basically the same location, but using the other side flags. Mm -hmm. And then we'll turn this piece of material around. We'll do the same cuts on the other side with the long connectors, just to show you all how that works. Excellent. Cool. Before I jump into this, a uh, couple of cut settings I have going on. I have the Kybal Bender bit in origin. I have Z-touched. My depth is 7.2 millimeters. My speeds are both set to default. And my spindle speed is around three. All right. Okay, here we go. That's it. Yeah, nice. Let's take a look at that. Now we can go ahead and deploy the next flags. And 
and set up on the other side. Yep, same exact thing, just mirrored. And because that template is centered in plate's window, um, our final Calverbender resting point is going to be the same on either side. Now, the mortise is going to look a little asymmetric because it has the entryway on one side yeah. of that mortise. And while you're cutting this, Jake, I'm just going to go grab us a small piece of sandpaper. Great. Thank you. Knock any fuzz off so it slides in. Mm -hmm. Now, it might look like these small connector mortises are a little bit far from the edge. Um, so you could place this wherever you want if you want to update that for your own project. The reason that we like to use the 70 millimeter spacing um, centered relative to the side flags is that when we do the long connector you'll see in a minute, uh, the mortise for that takes up quite a bit more space. And so that 70 millimeters is actually pretty safe. Uh, a safe distance from the edge so that you can get that long connector or the short connector in depending on which you want to use for your project. Either will work. Okay. It's nice to have this little bench down here. <laughs> we have this side done. Let's go ahead and flip it around. And cut the long connectors. This is going to work the same way. We're going to set this up with plate by duplicating that template, placing the file in exactly the same space, but we do need to use the different template, uh, the long connector specific template for this one. Okay, so we've got the short connector cut, we've got our material flipped around. We're going to go ahead and set up a new workspace for the long connector using the long connector template. Perfect. OK, hopping into the scan, we're going to go to workspaces and just go ahead and duplicate that single workspace and rename it for the long one. That way we don't get rid of our single workspace so we can jump back and forth between them. Going to remove the single and clear cut history and import the long connector. Same thing as before, we're going to use that zero millimeters on the x axis and for the y, negative 50 plus 9.5. Beautiful. Okay, same cut settings and everything. We are ready to go. Let her rip. And coming over to the right side. Yeah, if we go over to that overhead cam, you can see how now that we've done one, this is why we use that 70 millimeter spacing because these long connectors take up a lot more room for that mortise. They do indeed. And rinse and repeat.
Beautiful. And uh, after you've sanded that, before we move away from Origin, I know I saw you do one thing that's pretty important with these. Pretty cool tip uh, on how to use this open line cut because we designed this with an open path, which forces you to begin and end the cut in the right spot so you aren't uh, plunging or retracting in that undercut area. Um, but because it's an open path, you might be able to make the cut go one of two directions, conventional or climb cut. This is one of those rare cases where Origin might let you climb cut. So we want to show you guys how to make sure that you are conventional cutting this for best results. And the difference is very slight. What we're looking for is these marching ants. That's showing you the direction of the cut. If I start kind of biased down here towards my little blue dot, which is the plunge and retract spot, it has me going eventually in a climb cut direction. So what I want to do is be closer to the top left of that start point. Mm -hmm. And you can see now those marching ants have reverse direction yeah. and they're going in the conventional way now. You want to make sure those are going clockwise and not counterclockwise so that you get a conventional cut and the best stable results with yep. this. Okay, cool. Uh, those look beautiful. I think we're ready to go ahead and drill the edges. Let's do it. Drill the edges on this, uh, this other panel that I have here. So I've got this. Both of these pieces are 16 inches square. I'm just going to go ahead and clamp this to our MFT. How's that look for that camera angle, Goose? What do you think? Pretty good? Yeah, I like that. All right. Now, remember, we set the center of those Calverbinder connectors 70 millimeters in from the edge. Um, I have, here's a couple things I'm going to need from the kit. Again, I'm going to need this drill guide. I'm going to need the drill itself, two millimeters, and the T10 Torx bit. Uh, I'm going to use these pilot holes to drill two millimeter pilot holes for, uh, for the connectors. And I want that pilot hole that I use to be placed 70 millimeters in from the edge to match the undercuts that we made. So here I have my uh, adjustable square all set up to 70 millimeters in length and a nice sharp pencil. And I'm going to go ahead here and just scribe one and two on this side. When I get to the other side, I'll do that one. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is mark my reference face on this board. I'm going to put the backing side of this pilot against the back side of this board here. I'm going to mark this with an X. Okay. Now, I line up that, that mark that I made, that line. Take my drill here. Thanks for setting that up, Jake. Mm -hmm. one and the first cut is probably going to be a little bit tight but once you get there this drill jig is going to be perfectly lined up with your with the bit that you have nice that's two now we can just swap out here on this side for the torques and on this side since i just did one pilot hole I'm going to use two single connectors and I'll go ahead and use just the middle of the road 20 millimeter screws. Now, one interesting thing about these is that um, they're adjustable. The deeper you drive the screw, the more tension you put on the screw, the more it's going to flare out that dovetail head of these connectors. Um, so if you need to adjust the tightness of your connection for any reason, that's how you do that. You can give it just a little, uh, you know, eighth of a turn tighter or back it off just a little bit as you need to. For these to start, I like to turn the tension on my drill all the way down just to make sure, because if you overdo it, if you really tighten these, the connectors will break in half eventually because they're just plastic. Yeah. Um, but it takes a little bit to get there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we didn't even hit the torque on that, but I think that's just right. There's one. And we'll go for number two. Nice. 
Nice. Love the control on that drill. I know. It's great. So slow and smooth. All right. We're going to do the other, same thing on the opposite side. And uh, one thing that I'm not doing that you really could do if you wanted to get the maximum precision out of these is once you um, once you marked and placed that drill guide, you could use a clamp, actually, to hold it in place. Hmm. Um, I'm holding it by hand, and it can possibly, in theory, float just a little bit if you do that. But I'm also being pretty careful with it. Okay, back to the other side. Scribe one and scribe two. Drill guide. I'm going to use the same setup here. A little X reference on the face that I'm using the uh, that I'm referencing with the drill guide. I do have to swap back to the drill bit here. Now you could do all five screws if you wanted to really make it beefcake, but. I think I'm just going to do two. Let's start with two. I'm going to do the two on the outside. So I am still going to line up the center with my mark because that's where I want the center of the connector to go. But what I'm going to do here is uh, just drill out the right and left sides of this. Okay, there's one, and the other side, again, line that up with the center, and I'm just sighting this right down the drill bushing of this guide. Okay, nice. Long connectors, and I'm going to pull out four screws for this one, four of these 20 millimeter screws. It's not much to say about this. We're just... Just screwing. Pilot holes? Yeah. A couple of screws. The Torx is so nice on these compared to, I mean, you know, traditional American whatever Phillips head. Absolutely, especially on tiny screws, you have such a better handle on the Torx. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave this a little bit loose so I can start to seat the other side so that they both come together. Good call. At the same pace. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Got it. I love that. And same on... This side. Okay. Now we are ready to assemble. And the thing that we want to keep track of here is that our reference face is the same face that we referenced with the fence when we. Uh, when we line these up with plate. So I'm going to hand this to you, Jake. One moment. All right. All right. So reference, reference face, face, outside edge. Let's go ahead and slide those in. First time can be especially tight putting these together. I think we missed, I missed the it. mark on that second one. There we go. Yeah, you want the mallet for that? Of course. Oh, no. Ah. Perfect. Pretty that. strong just on its own, but obviously if this were a full case, this would be even stronger. That is a fantastic edge. Good fit. Yeah. We can take that back apart. Um and swap that over to the other side. Yeah. Why don't we spin that around Super so that strong. camera can see it. Nope. That's a good fit right there. Yeah, that is a very good fit. 
<laughs> it doesn't want to come apart. It's strong as heck. Yeah, that's great. Um, there we go, everybody. That's the Kyle Forbidden system in a nutshell, um, how it works with Origin. So we hope you learned something about the Kyle Forbinder system. And if you make something, which we hope you do. Yeah. Uh, make sure to post on Instagram with the hashtag ShaperMade, and we'll make sure to see it. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.